Hello, I'm Cheryl Dole. Welcome to In the Studio with Dole Designs. Um, I am doing this video to show everyone how to uh, stabilize stone using the acetone and epoxy method. Uh, I had looked up several videos on it and really couldn't find anything specifically for soft stone. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the process uh, from beginning to end and we'll go ahead and get that done. Let me show you some materials that you're going to need uh, for this particular method of stabilizing. Now keep in mind there are several methods like uh, backing stone. Um, there's a way to put uh, really thin type glue for lapidary on stones. Um, just so many different methods. But I wanted to go through this one right now because I couldn't really find too much on it. I saw I found the recipe involved to do it, instructions to do it, but not really a video. So we're going to go through this method. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, but it is very simple. And when I say it takes a lot of time, just to let the stone sit. So we'll go through all that. All right, so let's go through the materials you're going to need. Um, I found out the hard way. Make sure everything is glass or stainless steel. Um, so you'll need a glass measuring cup to measure your acetone. I used a plastic one, and yeah, it'll eat the plastic coating or any kind of coating right off of there. Uh, you'll need a glass jar uh, big enough for your slabs or your preforms. Uh, this is one that's already set up that we're going to be taking out. This is just a regular pickle jar. And this is set for um, about eight days now. You can leave them set for seven to eight days. And we'll, again, we'll go through all that. You're going to need um, acetone. Just get the raw acetone, not fingernail polish remover because it has different items in it. You just need acetone. So get it in the paint thinning department at your hardware store. I got that from Walmart. Um, Royal King has it at a really good price if you're close to a Royal King. You can get it by the gallon. I think it was around 12 bucks, so that was a good deal. You're going to need the standard epoxy 330. Sorry, this is in reverse, but I'll put a list of um, the ingredients that you're going to need. Um, make sure you get the clear epoxy, um, not any color to it. For backing, I use you know either DEF CON or Jet Set Black. But when you're doing the stabilizing, you want water clear. So it's just a standard epoxy, standard size. Um, so epoxy 330. Uh, water clear and I will again post that so actually I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the package it's a two-part epoxy so you've got your glue and your hardener so you're gonna need that and again like I said metal so you're gonna need to stir it so you're gonna need like a long metal spoon um, you get like an old teaspoon uh, ice teaspoon something like that something that's long enough for you to get down in there and stir same with your tongs to remove it. Make sure you got metal, glass, anything like that. Um, just be careful on breakage. Um, to pry open the cans, I had a hard time with that the first time. So I got a screwdriver here just to pry that open. Some of those are hard to get open and you don't want it to splatter once you get it open. Uh, just a simple, you can get them at Walmart real cheap or just use an old one that you might have, um, cookie sheet. And that's to take the stones out of the jar once they're finished. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I have a mask on. That's why I wanted to go through all the ingredients first. I'll go through the recipe also before I um, put my mask on. Uh, you might want rubber gloves. Feel better that way. Um, definitely wear some type of mask. This has a little ventilator part in it. And I also have a heavier one if I don't have enough area of ventilation. So make sure you're doing it in an area that um, you can get that ventilation that you need. Um, the acetone smells really strong. can give you like an immediate headache. So anytime you're dealing with that, uh, safety first. The recipe that I'm using is um, two cups or one pint of acetone to the standard two tubes of epoxy. And I got these off of Amazon and I looked them up and it just, it pops right up. If you look epoxy 330, the standard size pops right up. I think they're around $8 for a set. Um, acetone, like I said, you can get around $12 for a gallon. So it's not a real expensive process especially if you can do several. I mean, I filled this pickle jar up with just quite a bit. So let's go ahead and mix this up. I'm gonna put my mask on again. I might be a little muffled then, but safety first. I'm gonna put the camera on to uh, what I'm actually doing here so you can see that. All right, this jar here, I got this at uh, Myers, like five bucks. You can use a pickle jar. I chose this one because of the wide mouth on the top. <laughs> Um, there's no cardboard in the top of this. A lot of them come with cardboard, so just take that out if, you, if, if a jar you pick does have cardboard. So I'm going to put these gloves on. 
and put my mask on here. All right, this one I used before uh, for this pickle jar, so I should have exactly two cups left in here. This is a quart. So we're just gonna open that up. And be careful, because this does splatter. I really don't like these type of uh, lids on these, because they do tend to splatter. And I'm gonna fill this up to two cups, which is one pint. And that was it. I must use a little extra in the other one. So I'm going to pour some of this in to make it exactly two cups. Okay. Pop the lid back on there. And then I just have a really old towel on the surface here. And then pour that two cups into your acetone into your jar. Again, it does splatter, it does drip, so as quickly as you can get it in there. I did get some on the towel, so. All right. Now you're gonna wanna take the glue. You're gonna wanna use the hardener last, so use the one in the red if you get this kind first and the lid pops that open and just go ahead and squeeze the whole thing in there. Get my glove caught in it. Keep your glue at kind of a room temperature if you can. The colder it is, the harder it is to squeeze like that. And then I just put the lid back on. And I'm making more mess with the gloves, so I'm gonna take those off. So then you have your hardener. Again, just pop it open with the lid and make sure you empty all of that in there. And you can do a double batch by doubling this, which I may end up having to do. I don't know if I have enough for what I'm doing today. And then you just stir that up. Make sure you let it get as much to dissolve as you can. You don't want any clumps in there. And what I'm gonna do just to be able to show you everything is go ahead and put a few stones in here, seal it up, and then I might mix some up later and add to this so I can put more in. The benefit of having a little bit larger jar than that pickle jar. So it does take a little while to stir and dissolve. You'll kind of see a little cloudy pieces in there. When you get rid of all of those, you're good. All right, looks like we're good. Now we'll put the spoon in in the measuring cup. So we have our mixture done. As simple as that. And then I have my tub here of soft stones. I 
I have some uh, larger slabs I want to try to get in this time because the pickle jar would not allow for that. So I've got some Bluebird mine and some uh, Chris Cola. And if you need to, to keep it from splattering, go ahead and use your tongs. Some soda light. Inspiration mine, Crystal Cola. Some new Cornelia mine. I got little stickers on some shit telling me what it is. So I'll take those off. Make sure you take anything like that off. And make sure your stones are fairly clean when they go in as well. So if you got a lot of dirt or grime on them, make sure that comes off beforehand. And I'll go ahead and put some more in there later, but that kind of gives you the idea of what we're doing here. Then you're going to put the lid on that. You're going to let it sit for 7 to 10 days. And then every now and then you're going to want to swish it. Like every other day, just swish it around and you're good. And then after that time is elapsed, let me move this out of the way. Then you're going to want to remove the stone. So these have been in here about, like I said, about eight days. So we're going to go ahead and take those out and put them on the cookie sheet here. And then once you take them out and lay them on the cookie sheet, you're going to want to let those sit also for seven to ten days. You want them completely dry before you work with them. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? The colors are just amazing in the fluid there. And like I said, this is just one way to stabilize. It does take some time because you're looking at at least a two-week process. But once those dry up and you can cut them, it's really rewarding. Not worth not buying stones just because you have to stabilize. And there are some quick me quicker methods out there. Okay, I'll get those off, off, all those out off camera. Take us off a little bit. So if you have any other questions, leave them below and um, I'll go ahead and give a material list and everything to so that you know exactly what to buy. Uh, but it's very easy. So uh, make sure you get to stabilizing. Click our like and subscribe button. We'll be uploading other videos, both on lapidary and silversmithing and wire wrapping, wire weaving. Uh, we're also jewelry artists, as you probably, if you've seen our videos before, you've noticed. So thank you very much. And again, make sure you click and subscribe. Thank you.